So let's get started. How's everybody doing? Doing good here at uh, Fort Benning. Just had a missionary couple, uh, Tim and Bobby Becker, come through last night. They're consider they're with Cadence International. They're considering coming to Fort Benning, and um, which would be cool. It'd be great to have them. So uh, pray that that's where they'll actually end up. Probably sometime next year. That they've got to do some fundraising and stuff like that. Um, encouraged about that. Encouraged about uh, just went out yesterday with one of the guys I'm training. Um, shared the gospel, and uh, he led a guy to Christ, I think. You always think, you're like, well, he's saying everything that you would expect a guy to say that just came to Christ. Um, we'll see if he uh, meets with you know with uh, George for follow-up. George Clevenger was a guy, if you know, and uh, that was pretty encouraging. And uh, there were two guys. They were both in, in RASP, if you know what that is. And military ranger assessment selection program. And one guy was like, I grew up in a Christian home, and I definitely don't want to follow Jesus. And the other guy was like, Yeah, I'm ready to follow Jesus right now. He asked him, You know, what's stopping you from entering the kingdom right now? Nothing. What's stopping you from getting baptized? Nothing. And he walked him through the Great Commission. Do you want to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus? Yes. Do you want to teach? Do you want to be taught and obey what Jesus said? Yes. Do you want to get baptized? Yes. And so, uh, and it was pretty encouraging. I don't. It's God's that work in people's hearts well before we get there. So that's kind of that's some of the things that's going on at Benning. We're encouraged. Cool. Thanks, Jim. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm just gonna go down the row. <laughs> I'm doing real well. Thank you very much. Hey, Sean was up here in San Antonio, and I, I couldn't make time for him. I just let him know, no offense, but just couldn't get to him. Oh, really? Oh, cool. No big deal. Yeah. All right. Jonathan and Kevin. I think I'm I'm doing great. Had having lots of fun with Kevin and doing lots of outreach. By the way, Jim, George, and Kelly are awesome. I'm so encouraged by that story. I haven't talked to them in a while, but I I really love those two. I'm doing good. Uh, we went out and met with a couple of Bangladeshi guys yesterday, and then we had uh, we met some of the other people laboring here in this area that Jonathan knows, so been having uh, good fellowship and good laboring time. It's been great. And we get to work together a little bit on a project, so it's been good. Mm. Cool. Steve, how are you doing, brother? You're muted. Uh-oh, we lost you. He may need to come, go out and come back in. Sorry about that. Aaron, how are you doing, brother? Uh, doing great. Uh, been sort of coming down a little bit of a cold again, but uh, overall, <laughs> it's not too bad. And uh, it's, been, it's been good to have uh, a couple of days off work and been getting a lot of stuff done around the house on the cars and that kind of stuff. Cool. Awesome. Okay, Steve, we got you. Hi there. Can yes. you hear me? Yes. Okay, that's cool. So I'm probably the newest member to your your circle and some of you probably don't know me, but my name is Steve Parlato and my focus is Northeast Thailand and Thai Buddhist peoples. And while we're here in the US we do a bunch of outreach around Indianapolis. And I just got back from a month trip doing four different training events in Thailand. Some in the Thai language, some in English for missionaries, all about how to launch church planning movements. Um, we had a, a Buddhist nun who came to one of the trainings, still in her robes. She's learning about disciple making. That was it kind of stretched us a little bit. We We did see one guy come to faith when we did our out on the streets outreach and uh, that's that's gone really well with the follow-up 
yesterday, I see Thanksgiving Day. Was that yesterday? That's two days ago now. Uh, I got back to Indianapolis and went to. Uh, they serve meals. There's a big project in Indianapolis to serve like 40,000 Thanksgiving Day meals to less disadvantaged people and we convinced the missions pastor that they needed to pray for people and share the gospel on the spot and not just give out the meals and they agreed and got a group of volunteers together my wife and I joined that and uh, had some good time sharing the gospel with different people probably the most significant highlight was meeting a family african-american family who have just come to faith as a whole family so we had actually three generations around the table and uh, the, the older man I just felt really compelled to speak into his life a bit and he uh, he was visibly moved and I said you know we need you as a father as a spiritual father and he kinda knew he had his mandate uh, it's kinda hard to describe here quickly but he it was just it was just a very profound moment uh, even though they were believers coming in the door, I think God really did a work there. And maybe I've got some phone numbers and stuff to follow up. Maybe we can uh, help equip him to be a disciple maker. Uh, I've got a theory, Chuck, that the best disciple makers are older. Hmm. Our movement launchers in Asia were all kind of in their 50s and 60s when they got going. Hmm. And I, I see that in this man, too. Hmm. Cool. Sounds like a busy Thanksgiving and just after the flight. <laughs> Hope you got over jet lag, bro. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm, it takes me forever. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. You get up at 2, 3 in the morning. <laughs> Nobody going. else is up. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm doing pretty good. I used the holiday to do some serious prayer and reflection. Uh, for just uh, looking at next year and what do I need to primarily take off of my plate. I certainly don't need to put anything on. So uh, Jesus and I are in a, in a dialogue about what to trim. So that's where I'm at. It was a good time. I spent more time watching TV than I have the whole year. And one day I watched two football games. So <laughs> just chilling out. You need to watch more TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's see here. Jeff, why don't you pray for us to remember Aaron's cold and then uh, several of these people that just came to Christ. But pray for us, Jeff. Uh, Father, I pray that you would uh, be with us this morning. And I pray that uh, the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart this morning be accepted from your sight. I pray for, I pray for uh, Aaron's cold. I pray for uh, the young, or the young uh, ranger that um, says he wants to follow Jesus. I pray for Steve Parletto and uh, that he would have lasting fruit from his training in Thailand. I pray, Father, that you'd be with us this morning. Help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to become uh, more effective. And uh, please teach us what you want us to learn this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. So the last time we got together... We talked, uh, we made some goals. Jim, your goal was to spend Monday with God. Did you yeah, get a did, chance? Did, that went well. Spent uh, from about 11.30 to 5.30, six hours at the uh, Columbus Public Library. Began that with uh, an hour of prayer using a prayer wheel that I got from uh, Curtis Sargent. I think it's a pretty popular little tool out there. Um, and uh, spent just quite a bit of time hashing out the priorities for the rest of the year, and I just a lot of security. I think God really honored His promise that um, not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. And I really felt like I got 
kind of like you did, I got my azimuth check from the Lord through that and uh, knew what I needed to do from now till the end of the year. Um, reflected on some of my iron on iron goals for this quarter and uh, some success and some failure there. And um, I, I, the, the big I think punch line from the Lord was like, "Well, God, this is this is as good as I'm doing." And the, and the question was, well, "Yeah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Quit? <laughs> no, I'm just gonna keep persevering." So uh, that, <clears throat> even though it's been a tough quarter, I think I've got some peace kind of just coming forward. So. I did it, and it, it had the promised effect. Cool. Uh, Kevin, you were going to put the No Place Left vision in writing. Um, did not put it in writing, but I did uh, practice it a couple of times, um, so I, just, I do need to work on that again. Okay. Cool. Jonathan, you were going to reword the No Place Left vision and then do a study on God's glory. So the, the rewording of the vision I did, the glory study I have up here and I've looked at it a few times, but I have not uh, decided yet uh, how I'm going to organize that study. But it's, it's up on my, it's in front of my eyes here. Okay, cool. Daniel, you were going to express the vision as a promise and review the vision. Yeah, pardon, that's not very specific, is it? But uh, but yeah, I have been doing that and uh, sharing and uh, my my typical uh, following goals as well. All right. And then uh, let's see, Jeff, you were going to communicate urgency. Build a list and cast vision to everyone and map of the city. Yeah, we build a list of every uh, church in the Coastal Bend region so we can start checking them off. And we've made progress towards that. As far as the map, I haven't been able to print one yet. Okay. Aaron, you're going to start another church and keep communications going in the region and globally. Uh, yeah, that's been that's been doing all those things. Uh, last Saturday when we met afterwards, I uh, had a pretty full day, and uh, part of that included going out and doing some follow up on some doors we knocked on uh, two weeks previous. Ended up spending two hours in the home of a Christian couple. Um, Probably the easily the best time I had with uh, Christians doing follow up, and uh, so that I think that's going to go somewhere. I've already had a really strong follow up in that same apartment complex the week before that, so I've got two really strong follow uh, follow ups that have already happened, and um, still have four families to follow up in that apartment complex. So uh, planning to do more of that today, and uh, I don't know how many people will be home with the holidays, but I'm going to go check it out and. Uh, so that went well. Uh, we and then later that same night we had a good follow up with a new Christian family uh, that also went really really well. Um, so anyways, there's there's uh, I wouldn't say we started a church yet in the last week, but uh, I think there's a strong possibility to make that happen by the end of the year, which was my original goal. And then as far as communication in the, in the region, as I mentioned last week, uh, Jim McKnight helped helped us out with a with a lead or referral in uh, the Seattle area, which I was able to. Pass off to Bryant uh, Jones and, and those guys uh, talked on the phone and already met in person in, uh, in this last week um, since I got that lead from Jim and that went real well. Um, so uh, if I followed up with Jim, with uh, Brian after that meeting and, and uh, heard more about that, um, but I'll be continuing to follow up with Brian um, about that and about other things uh, he's got going up there in that area. Cool. All right. Uh, mine was to set a corporate goal for vision casting. We haven't done that yet because uh, we're meeting next week to do that. Um, but I have started vision casting with, or at least attempting, with people that I share the gospel with and find out that they're believers. I'm walking them through the Great Commission and that's going really well. I've shortened my testimony down to 
20 seconds and uh, just asking the, the question because 90% of the people that I'm sharing with are believers already. So I'm just asking them, do you believe this story about Jesus dying on a cross for your sins? And if they say yes, then I ask them, have you heard the rest of the story? And then share the Great Commission. And so uh, that gets to, are they, do they really understand the gospel and the vision? So I've been sharing that. All right. Well, anybody want to do some vision casting for us? About two minutes. I got you, Chuck. All right. I can go uh, freelance. Mm -hmm. I got two minutes. Okay, one of the things that we uh, typically use to cast vision is the Great Commission. And I'm wondering if someone could quote that for me. It's going to be a tough crowd. Jesus came and said to them, All authority under heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. Thank you, Kevin. And so here we have Jesus, um, now the two phrases I want to zero in on to cast a little vision, vision here is the two phrases, make disciples, and the second phrase, of all nations. And so maybe somebody could flip out a definition of what is a disciple exactly. We kicked this around a little bit last time in our study. Yeah, Luke 6.40 says that every student when he's fully trained will be like his master. So a disciple is someone who is being trained to be like Jesus. Okay, or if they're fully trained, they'll be just like Jesus. So does that sound like a qualitative or a quantitative goal? Qualitative. Yeah, that's about quality. That's extremely high quality, right? All nations, on the other hand, is a quantitative goal. And so Jesus has both quality and quantity. In our network we spend a lot of time doing training and one of the questions that we ask ourselves is did we train the person? Do you think that's and, and how many people did we train? Do you think that's quantitative or qualitative? Yes. Okay, I'm going to say when we ask the question, how many people did we train, that's a, that's a quantitative goal. That's how many people did we put through the process. And that's important. That's something that we want to keep our mind on. But there is another question that we want to ask, and that is how many people got trained. In other words, how many people actually do and live out what we are talking about. And so um, as we're doing training, we want to make sure that we go for all nations and that we also want to get disciples. So uh, the way we're going to get to generations and depth and quality is by training a lot of people, yes, but also making sure that they get trained and they can do it. I think I did two minutes. All right. Thanks, Jim. Qualitative, quantitative. Good. All right, here's the link to the second module in the chat. If you need me to send that out via email, let me know. But um, today we're going to do the second module in the intensive series, and it's God's plan to reach all peoples. Okay, I need a note taker, but it can't be Jonathan. Jonathan did it last time. Who's going to take notes? I nominate the new guy. It's initiation time. <laughs> right over here. Okay, Steve. I can take notes. All right. Just, uh, you got it. You type away in the block and... We'll discuss this. 
So okay, well, I, I can't edit your document, but I'll type. Oh, here, let me let me uh, do that. I did that last week too. Forgot to give editing rights. Hey, Jim. I really like your uh, vision casting. Excellent kitchen cast, yes. Okay, try it now, Steve. Thanks. Let's see. You may need to refresh. Okay. Um, how do I do that? Uh, <laughs> refresh this. Refresh the Google Doc. Yeah. Yep, I'm good now. There you Got go. it. Good. You know how to make this work. That's amazing. Sweet. Huh? Okay, so uh, let's start with Aaron. Aaron, uh, turn to Genesis 12, 1 through 3. All the verses are at the bottom of the document if you want to use that or your own Bible, doesn't matter. Uh, Genesis 12, 1 through 3, Aaron. And we're answering what was God's plan or what is God's plan and who does he want to use to fulfill that plan. All right, now the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in all the families of the earth, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Okay. So what was God's plan? Bless Abram and all the families of the earth through him. Okay. God's going to use one man and out of him reach the nations. Okay. All right, Exodus nineteen three through six, Daniel. May I get the next one? I'm late waiting for my uh, Bible software program to open up. Sure. We don't we don't use real Bibles anymore. <laughs> All right, Jim, Psalm sixty. Or I'm sorry, Jim, Exodus nineteen three through six. And uh, Daniel, why he's getting that turned to Psalm 67. Exodus 19, beginning in verse 3. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings. And brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. Okay. So, so what's God's plan? Uh, God's going to use the nation of Israel to bless all the other nations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the observation. Both of these books, Genesis and Exodus, are written to the nation of Israel when Moses is writing them. So Moses is writing to a people, showing them, casting vision for them that they came from Abraham as he's telling the story in Genesis, and then as he writes in Exodus, he's showing them that that, is, that God has been fulfilling that promise, and it's right before them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's Moses, in some ways, is casting vision for the nation of Israel through their history, and Paul will probably do the same thing for us in Galatians 3. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's where I'm probably getting ahead of myself. That's where we're going next, huh? Uh, that's my observation, the audience for both of these books. Okay. Uh, anybody else have something to add to the plan or who does God want to use? 
Yeah, you can see that God's desire is to use uh, to cause every member of uh, the nation of Israel to they're going to be a nation of priests. Okay. So it's not not limited to a particular group of people, but but every single member of the nation is going to be a part of this priestly task of spreading his global glory. Okay. Good. Hey, can I ask a question about that, or am I going to derail us? No, go ahead. So I can't make any sense out of this verse because Moses is saying God's going to promise that they're going to be a nation of priests. And then he institutes the priesthood, and they're not a nation of priests. There's a small portion of one of the tribes that are designated as priests. Um, we don't see the priesthood of the believer instituted until the curtain's torn in the New Testament and the New Covenant. So how does... Is this? I mean, how do you interpret what Moses is saying? Anybody want to handle that? Yeah, the people say no to this plan. They're terrified, and so that's when the law is given and the priesthood is formed. Um, and I'd also say here that the way God wants to institute this plan is to make a covenant relationship with this, these people. Mm, good. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. I'm not convinced that that um, I like that. I've thought through that myself. I'm not convinced that's the case. I still think even if it were God's design to still have a priesthood for a season before, uh, as you say, the, the uh, New Covenant, it still fits the, the general idea that they're going to be a holy nation and that salvation is going to be accomplished through this people Israel. So to be a priest is to be a bridge. So the, the nation of Israel, in, in a general and a broader sense, every member is a part of this ministry of bringing about Messiah to the world. So I, don't, I, I like that. I think it's good. I, I want to be convinced of that, but I'm not yet. But I still think, I still think we have a strong case for um, the um, general trajectory that we're taking either way. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of the things that might be transparent here that we didn't catch is that God's speaking to Moses, a man, to speak to the nation. So the who is Moses as well. So he definitely wants to use Israel, but he's using Moses right now. Okay, Daniel, Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Look on us with favor, so that your way may be known on the earth your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations rejoice and shout for joy, for you judge the people for you judge the peoples with fairness and lead the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth has his the earth has its produce, its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. Okay. So what's God's plan? All the nations are going to fear him. All the nations are going to rejoice. All the peoples are going to praise him. Okay. Okay. The earth will yield its increase also in the last verse. Mm -hmm. The earth uh, will, all the earth will, let's see, it says in verse 2, your saving power will be known among all nations. Okay. And this psalm is uh, the people of Israel, and they start out by asking for God's grace, blessing, and favor upon them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the word us is used towards the end several times. Good. Also in verse 2, it says that your way may be known on earth. So it's not just saving power, but a way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. truth and grace. Good. Awesome. All right. Isaiah 49, 5 through 6. Jeff, if you'd read that. And now the Lord says, He who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Okay. God's plan. God has two plans here, I think. Um, one is to get Jacob and Israel healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's in verse 6, It is too small thing for you to be my servant to restore, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. Mm -hmm. So it's to rest, first restore those that are already believers, if you will, and then the second part is, as they get restored, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring my salvation to the ends of So it's first get Israel healthy, then use Israel as a light to the nations. Okay. Yeah, and so we've got Isaiah, Israel, and Jesus as the people of God we use. Okay, so this is a dual uh, prophecy in the instance of using the nation, but also it's a messianic prophecy as well. So we see uh, Israel and, and Jesus. Good. All right, Jonathan. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God's plan. He wants to disciple the nations. Okay. And uh, disciples who obey. Okay. And going back to Jim's vision gassing, that's not only quantity, but quality too. Good. And who does he want to use to accomplish that? Uh, immediate context is the 11, but my implication, all believers. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a big pivot point in the scriptures. We got from the nation of Israel being God's instrument to reach the nations to um, his spirit being poured out on all believers mm -hmm. and that um, anybody who follows Jesus can is part of this commission now. Mm -hmm. So he's going to use everybody now. Yeah. And I'm seeing a weakness in this study right here. So it would be good to uh, put 1 Peter 2 9 and Revelation 1 6 in there too, Steve, because now the believers are the priesthood. So. Nine and okay. Revelation one six. Two nine. Mm -hmm. One six. Yeah. Good. Okay. And Acts one eight. Kevin. 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. Good. God's plan. Uh, empower people with his Holy Spirit and then to um, uh, for them to be witnesses even to the remotest part of the earth. Okay. And the other thing I was going to say with, with uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I think his plan is also to use the nations. So it wasn't just the 12, but it was to use the nations to go out and reach other nations because he says make disciples of all the nations. And their disciples, they're going to do what Jesus commanded them to do, which was to go reach all the nations. So it's like it's going to just multiply into a lot of different directions. Okay, so the laborers are in the harvest. Good. Good catch. All right. So for the sake of time, we're going to skip down to 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. Steve, you got that? I know I'm taxing you in multitasking, but uh, you got that 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 4. All right, here we go. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, God's plan. All people will come to the knowledge of truth. Okay. Is there an explicit mention of who he wants to use to do that in this passage? Not really. No. Uh, I'll read a little more context there. Okay. It's the desire of God and Jesus. Okay. That's good. I'll go with that. So we can use the Armenian verse to make a Calvinist point. <laughs> All right. Don't bring that up. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you know, I try to condense just, the time here and you throw that in there. <laughs> I'll just leave now. <laughs> okay, let's go through head, heart, and hands real quick. As you look at this, what is your big takeaways? as far as knowledge, as far as what we learn out of all these, this string of verses. Um, God has always wanted to rule over all humanity. Okay. And every plan he's made, every covenant he's made has had that as its end. Uh, God's plan has always been to multiply from one person to a community to a nation to nations. Good. He's wanted to use people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, just to build on that, there's no plan B. Plan A is to use humanity to reach humanity, and um, that's always been the plan. Mm -hmm. I just never get tired of uh, of doing this this study, uh, studies like this. So I, I know it's just it's the, the big idea, but just the big idea always strikes me. Uh, God kind of depicts the victory ahead of time, and it's just good. It's refreshing always to look at that victory, um, and just know this is this is where all things are going. And so I, maybe I'll just pick up on particular on Psalm 67. It's one of my favorites. Not just the people. The people fearing God and the people praising God and the people rejoicing in God. So actually joy, uh, people are going to be enjoying God. And uh, cool.
You're muted, Steve. I think there's a repeated theme that God wants to bless all people. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. We won't go into prosperity gospel. <laughs> that would really mess things up. You know, uh, one of the things in our circles, we tend to poo-poo big, you know, big churches, large gatherings. Uh, and really, it is about big. It's just how you get there. Uh, God wants every single person on the planet to be saved. Uh, and so we are going big. It's just that our methods uh, may not get us there. So we never need to poo-poo big. We just got to get there the right way. So, Or you could also say that um, the problem with the big church is that it's really far too small. Mm. Good. All right. Let's go to the heart. How does this make you feel? Thankful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, unstoppable. <laughs> yeah. I feel purposed. I've got a clear purpose. Mm -hmm. Victorious. Mm -hmm. I feel supported and empowered. Okay. I feel like I'm in the middle of what God is most interested in. I also kind of feel like, what the heck is real? <laughs> <laughs> Why, why do you feel like that? Because Israel uh, missed it, or? Well, I read some of these these verses, and I'm like, man, that was like such 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 hardcore promises and such a huge part of God's plan. And I know that Jesus fulfills it all, but I I, I also am all, I always remember Romans 11 and and what's going on there. So. Yeah. I feel challenged, um, not, I don't think personally, but I feel a challenge to wake up the church, just like Jonathan is talking about Israel, they fell asleep at the switch, we have fallen asleep at the switch, and that's why we need to cast the vision to our fellow believers, so, uh, you, you could almost make a point that if folks don't understand the heartbeat of God, they may not even be saved. That's very prophetic, but uh, I think I can make a case for that. So, all right, any other feelings? Did that Aaron Palmquist guy fall asleep? <laughs> They're forcing you out, Aaron. How do you feel, bro? <laughs> uh, I feel encouraged. All right, good. All right, so we did head and heart, and we'll save the hands for goal setting. Um, let's uh, do some practice. Let's uh, practice our one-minute story, and uh, I'll go first to uh, set the example. Um, uh, uh, Jeff, do you have your timer there that you can time us? Yes. Okay. Let me know Let when me you're ready, and I'll start. I'm ready. Okay. When I was a young man, I became a paratrooper and I was scared to death of jumping out of airplanes. 
So I made a deal with God. If you open my parachute, I'll go to church every Sunday. One Sunday, I heard about Jesus dying on a cross for my sins. He was buried and rose again from the dead. Do you, have you heard that story and do you believe it? Where Jesus died on the cross for our sins? Yes. Well, there's another story that follows on. He was resurrected from the dead and he commissioned his disciples to go into all nations and make disciples by baptizing them and teaching them to obey his commands. Are you his disciple? Have you been baptized? And are you obeying his commands? Uh, 54 seconds, 54.31. Okay. Okay. Now that's my adaptation. I'm not throwing that on you. <laughs> it's just the way I'm doing business now. So who's next? One of the saddest days of my life was the day that I signed into the United States Army Ranger Regiment to be a ranger. I thought that when I got there, I'd finally be fulfilled. I had been looking for fulfillment and joy in my Army career, in alcohol, in athletics, in girls, and none of those things was fulfilling me, and the Ranger Regiment was kind of like the last straw. And a couple of friends of mine, over a period of time, began to share the idea with me that the only way I was going to find fulfillment in life was to let this guy, Jesus, run it. Those guys were Russ Perkins and Chuck Wood. And uh, I thought I was a Christian. Uh, I grew up in, you know, going to church once a month. But I had never really thought about letting Jesus totally rule my life. And so I began, I began to take him up on the offer. And the more he ran my life, the more fulfillment I found. Are you interested in letting Jesus run your life in the same way he's, I'm trying to let him run mine? Boom. <laughs> Next. I can go. So I was uh, born into a family that was very close to God, but I decided about halfway through that I wanted to run my own life and make my own decisions. And, my life went downhill. I got really frustrated, angry, depressed. I was cutting myself and putting matches out on myself. And by the time I reached college, I was so tormented that I was hearing voices. And I was terrified that I was going to lose my mind. So I got down on my knees and I said, God, I will do whatever you want if you take these voices out of my head. And God answered my prayer. He took the voices away, but then he spoke to me and he showed me that he loved me so much that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for the forgiveness of my sins and that Jesus rose from the dead so that I could have a new life. And he gave me that new life. He gave me peace, joy, and a purpose. He'll do the same for you. Give your life. Surrender to Jesus today. Boom. 44 seconds. <laughs> nice. Setting the bar high. <laughs> Who's next? Might as well jump in here. I grew up in a good church-going family, but at age 13, I became convinced there was no God, and I set out on a path of self-destruction. Started getting in fights, breaking bones. Unfortunately, I was a very talented drummer, but drumming was all about myself and collecting attention. I started to I joined an outdoor leadership school in Montana where I went through a series of powerful experiences where God showed himself real to me. And one night driving around I came across a concert and it was an excellent band. I went in and the drummer was actually better than me, which kind of shocked me that there was anyone better than me at the time. But he challenged us and said, who here wants to commit their way to following Jesus? And I knew he was talking right to me, and I gave my life to following Jesus. And from that point forward, everything began to change. I went from an angry, violent person to someone who was in peace and control. And I went from someone asking for attention for myself to actually being concerned about others. 
And Jesus died on a cross for me, and he died on a cross for you. What would keep you from following him today? All right. All right, boom, baby. How long was that? <laughs> I'm really sorry I didn't start it. Ah. It, sounded, it sounded it was pretty good. <laughs> Man. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> it was it was so good he couldn't he couldn't think straight. Yeah. Set the timer. <laughs> that says something in itself. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do the the hybrid. I find myself doing that a lot actually with the and I'll, I'll throw the Great Commission in there. Okay. You know I used to be um, I used to be uh, a really selfish person. In fact, I was all about myself. Every day I just wake up and live my life uh, for myself. Kind of led me to a place where I was I was on drugs and uh, I, in fact I was using crystal meth, but all that changed for me when uh, a young lady pointed at me and she basically said you need God in your life, and encouraged me to start reading my Bible. There I discovered that God sent His Son and He took the punishment for the wicked things I've done, and then he, he rose again from the grave, and I had to believe in Him. I'd heard all that before, but I heard this part: I had to surrender to Him, and I surrendered to Jesus. He turned my life upside down. You're saying that you also have uh, surrendered your life to follow Jesus Christ. i tell you something that, that I discovered as well. I discovered that Jesus said all authority had been given to him and that uh, he calls us to go make disciples of all nations. Uh, so not just churches to do this, not just pastors. To do this. He calls everyone, every follower, to go make disciples of all nations. And every follower can baptize people and every follower can disciple other people to be disciples. Um, what I'd like to do is train you how you can be a follower of Jesus Christ, a full, full, fully functioning follower of Jesus Christ uh, that can lead other people to faith, that can baptize people, and to teach those people to do the same thing. You know, we're seeing this happen in, uh, in your city already, and we'd love for you to be part of that. 68 seconds. All right. Pretty good. I, me I meant to say 88. I'm sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> hey Daniel, what I what I liked best about your uh, test your test your story there was the fact that that some woman performed prophetic evangelism on you. I married her, and she's born me three children. Nice. Would you say she's prophetic? <laughs> is, she, is she prophetic in nature? Yes. There you go. Big time. Yeah. She's I, living it up. I leave that part out of the story because. Uh, she always upstages Jesus, and everybody goes, "Oh, that's so sweet! How many kids do you have? Can I see a picture?" So I just leave her as a lady or a young lady, and then I save the romantic end for later when I introduce her. I introduce Jesus, and then I introduce her. Awesome. <coughs> Priorities. That's good. All right, Aaron's up. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, before I knew Jesus, I was uh, depressed and suicidal. I thought a lot about putting a gun to my head and, and ending things. It seemed like that would be a lot easier. Only reason I never did that is I knew where I was going and it wasn't heaven. Uh, <clears throat> so I realized um, that there was nothing my friends could do, there's nothing my parents could, could do, there's nothing I could do to get me out of this depression that I was in. I'd heard a lot about Jesus, and I figured if, if Jesus really is a son of God, that uh, he would be the only person that could get me out of this dark, deep uh, hole that I was in. So I gave my life to Jesus. Uh, shortly after doing that, uh, Jesus spoke to my heart and said, Aaron, if you'll follow me each year, hereafter will be better than the last. Uh, that promise was the only glimmer of hope I had in my life, and I decided to accept and follow Jesus the best I could from there on out. Uh, since doing that, Jesus has fulfilled and transformed me with the uh, hope and peace that only he could do. How would you like Jesus to do the same for you? All right. And Kevin, I think you're actually Jeff is last. 107. Cool. Awesome. All right. When I was about 15, I remember believing that the only thing I could do to be valuable was to do everything perfectly and to cope with the failure, the rejection, and the ridicule that came from trying to be perfect I escaped into recreational drugs and by sleeping. And then I remember hearing a 
famous Bible teachers say that our value comes from the cost God paid for us when he sent his son down to earth to die on a cross for everything that we did wrong. And then he rose him from the dead to show that everything he said was true. And what he said was, if I will turn from serving self to serving him, that I'll not only experience forgiveness, but I'll experience true life. And so I told God I wanted that no matter what it took. And what I've come to realize is, one, is that when I, um, that I can't make myself more or less valuable. And two, that when I make Jesus my boss and let him call all the shots in my life, I really do experience the wholeness and fullness of life. Have you ever done anything like that? Okay, cool. Jeff? Um, yeah, you know, when I was a young man, a younger man, I, um, I was looking for something to give my life to, and I wasn't a bad kid, but I felt empty inside, like I didn't have any real purpose uh, to live for. And I began to learn about Jesus and how he came to show us how to live and how he had given his life for others, and he died on a cross for us. And I, I recognized that I, that's what I was looking for, and I began to follow Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord, Let start letting him call the shots in my life. And since that time, I felt full of peace and full of uh, like purpose, like I've really found why I'm here and what I should be doing. And so I'm curious, have you ever thought about following Jesus and letting him call the shots in your life? Awesome. 40 seconds. <laughs> Way to go. All right. And boom. <laughs> Good job, man. We got that. Okay, let's go to the hands, setting goals. Uh, what are your goals? I'll go first. Um, I'm just going to keep. Uh, this uh, figuring out how to set a corporate goal of sharing the vision to reach no place left and implementing it myself by uh, challenging believers with the Great Commission. I did a lot of soul searching in that day long with God, and I think one of the things that God has really challenged me on is whether I'll trust him to just focus on abiding and not um, doing as much, focusing on um, doing external ministry. And uh, I was trying to pray for this quarter for 45 minutes a day, and I just wasn't even getting close to that at all. So I scaled back, and uh, I'm just trying to pray for 20 minutes a day right now. I, I, I don't know if it's because of the culture I grew up in or it, spiritually. I, I tend to be strong in the, in the scriptures. I read a high volume and memorize a lot of the scriptures, but I just struggle to pray. And I think it, it's because of an independent – got a character flaw, just independence and um, arrogance – and so to kind of just work on that in a practical way, I'm praying for, trying to pray for 20 minutes a day. So that's what I'd like you guys to hold me accountable to. Yeah. Good. Let's take a break real quick. It is 10.02 on the East Coast. So um, uh, Aaron, would you pray for laborers, please? Uh, Jesus, dear Lord Jesus, I ask that you raise up laborers in, in each of our cities that we represent, that you would introduce us to those laborers. I ask that you would move laborers to our cities that don't live there now and introduce us to those people. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would raise up laborers in our churches and in the harvest fields in and around our cities and introduce us and our disciples to those people so that we can continue to multiply to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, someone else, your hands. 
Uh, I'm going to work on a 60-second Great Commission pitch. I'll keep it separate from my story for now, but <clears throat> we will work on putting them together at some point. But right now, I'll just do a six. I'll work on a 60-second Great Commission pitch for believers. Uh, I'm into, I'm into keeping things short and simple, so I'm just going to go tell people they need Jesus in their life and follow Daniel's wife's example. <laughs> uh, that, uh, I'm, I actually am going to do that, but I have something else too that I, another goal is, my, another goal is to spend more time in the harvest field. I got, uh, from our verses we read, Exodus 19.4 has stuck with me says, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And uh, I was just looking at the notes here, the big picture, and it, it seems like in the Old Testament it's, it's all about reaching everybody. And in the, and in the Old Testament it kind of seemed like it was just about reaching Israel. But God used the Egyptians to reach the Israelites. Yeah. Uh, and, in, and even in Genesis 12 and... In Psalm 67, there's like in, in Genesis 12, it says, You'll, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. you uh, the Israelites could see God's prophecy come true by how he was using the, the other nations around them. Bottom line is, I'm always encouraged by how God is, is using the harvest field, and I don't get to see that if I'm not in the harvest field. So, uh, my goal is to, is to go do follow up today and tomorrow. Uh, in the harvest field. Good. So, Aaron, when, what's your, how much time do you need to spend in the harvest field? Are you committing to a certain amount, days, hours? I pretty much stick to uh, being in the harvest field on weekends, Saturday and Sunday. I mean, as far as going out and and. Re and Spend time with people that don't know Jesus. I do discipleship during the weeks, uh, evenings and weekends. I work a 40-hour week job. Uh, so evenings, weekends is discipleship with existing Christians, and weekends is hard field. I need to spend an hour with the Lord every uh Every day, <laughs> and um, um, I have several, uh, about six folks that are need to be baptized. So I'm gonna pursue setting a date and getting those things kind of settled in. And uh, as a new believer, has just moved to a different neighborhood where it just so happened we have some other uh, believers there that all of them need to be baptized. So I'm gonna try to form church in this apartment complex. And see if we can do a baptism service there. So that that's my uh, that's what I'm aiming at, at least setting those dates. And sorry if this whoever's taking notes, I'll just apologize. That's uh, I don't know if that, you're even able to take notes on that, but I want to throw this in there because I need accountability on this. I'm I'm really bad about my numbers, and uh, I always just push this off. I need to do my numbers, wig take numbers, for my city and for Charlotte. So I want I want to do brutal facts, or just say wig take numbers for Daniel City and for another city. Okay. Jeff, Kevin, or Steve. My, my following goals are to spend 15 minutes a day in prayer and to share the gospel once a day and also to uh, share vision with somebody in my city once a day if I can. And I guess that's a fishing goal too. Thank you. 
Yeah, 50 minutes of prayer and four chapters in the Bible a day. For me, um, you know, I've been asking people if they want to meet, um, but I haven't really been... And there's a lot of believe. I've run into a lot of believers too. So, I'm going to come up with a question that will also help me introduce the Great Commission. And uh, you know, I do. I have gone to sharing the Great Commission to people that want to accept Christ and having them pray through that. But I haven't necessarily um, been challenging Christians with the Great Commission. So I'm going to come up with a question to ask uh, if they're believers, rather than just to meet with them. Okay, this this coming week, on Wednesday and Friday, <coughs> I have an opportunity to uh, be at a do, to do an outreach at a Presbyterian church in town, and so my goal there is is certainly to share the gospel during the lunch hours with the people that come for food, and to try and find someone to train up from that church in how to do harvest stuff and do discipleship. So it's, a, it's in, basically I'm mobilizing a new church into the whole process. So it's a Wednesday and Friday, kind of a lunch outreach, and then tra trying to find people we can train up from that church. And it's, it's uh, at any rate, a lot of potential there. Yeah. So abiding goals for me... Um, are going going pretty well, but uh, we do uh, basically f uh, five pages a day in the Bible, and I uh, pray with my wife an hour a day, and then at least 45 minutes personal prayer a day. So five pages. It's almost five chapters, but not quite. And then I I meet with a chat partner. If you guys know some of Curtis's stuff, just accountability partner every two weeks. So just want to stay on track with that. That's going going well so far, but that's that's sort of the abiding benchmark. All right. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan, why don't you pray for us, and then we'll go into Q&A. And it's good that we got Steve with us, but I won't say anything else. Why don't you pray for us, Jonathan? Father, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for your word and the, the revelation, the wisdom that's in it. Lord, I ask that that seed would find good soil in our hearts, uh, that we would be men who reproduce a hundredfold, uh, that uh, the word that, that uh, has been sown uh, would impact and influence and flavor uh, the, our work, our lives, our abiding in you, that the mutual encouragement and accountability uh, would produce fruit in the coming weeks and months and years. Lord, transform us, make us like you, give us laborers for the harvest, empower us, give us boldness to proclaim the gospel, and when we do, Lord, may it be in demonstration of your spirit and your power. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.